there's a common problem that we see in video games that recurs quite often in power supplies. And this comes under the heading of diagnosing a bad filter capacitor. A lot of mechanics have quite a bit of trouble repairing power supplies when they have a bad filter capacitor. The reason being that you see all kinds of strange readings. And if you don't know what to expect, you really don't know how to interpret the readings that you make. So let's take a look at this power supply and see what happens when we have a bad filter capacitor. When a filter capacitor fails, it generally loses its ability to hold a sufficient charge. This allows the input voltage to the regulator, which is shown here by the graph on the left, to drop below the 7.5 volt minimum required to maintain our 5 volt output. When the input voltage drops below the 7.5 volt minimum, the output voltage of the regulator drops as well. And we can see by the graph on the right that the voltage has dropped below the 5 volt minimum required by the computer. Now, let's see how the average mechanic might tackle this problem. Anytime you have bizarre problems with your game and you don't know where else to turn, start by checking the power supplies. Knowing that power supplies are responsible for a large percentage of the failures in games, our average mechanic checks the power supply across the power rails on the printed circuit board. But the meter doesn't read 5 volts. The meter only reads 4.5 volts. That's because the meter is averaging the times when the voltage is up at 5 with the times that the voltage is allowed to drop lower because of that defective filter capacitor. The meter averages out the two and shows us a reading of 4.5 volts. Although the meter shows us a reading that seems to indicate our problem is a low voltage coming out of the regulator, we know that our problem is really caused by a bad filter capacitor. Well, we have a saying in electronics, and the saying is, garbage in, garbage out. What that means is that when we encounter a bad output from a device or a circuit, before we change that device or repair the circuit, we want to check the input to it to determine if it's good or not. Certainly, you wouldn't expect a device to have a good output if the input was bad. Knowing this, and based on the incorrect assumption that the problem is low voltage from the regulator, our average mechanic then checks the input to the regulator and finds it to be slightly under 9 volts DC. The average mechanic's no fool, and he knows as long as he has at least 7.5 volts as an input to the regulator, the output should be a constant 5 volts. Since he's tested the input and he has at least 7.5 volts, and he doesn't have a good 5 volt output, he assumes the device to be bad and changes the regulator. Of course, when he fires the game back up again, he has the same problem as he had before because he changed a good part. And you certainly can't expect the game to work any better when you change a part that's already good. It still looks like a low voltage problem. And now our average mechanic is starting to get a little confused. On one hand, 8.9 volts as an input should be plenty to get exactly 5 volts out. And on the other hand, our average mechanic knows that the input to this regulator is normally somewhere around 12 volts. Could this mysterious drop in voltage have anything to do with the problem? Well, again, our average mechanic is no slouch when it comes to fixing games. So he thinks to himself, gee, I wonder what's wrong. Maybe the diodes are bad. So he checks all four diodes in the bridge rectifier with his meter. The bridge rectifier tests good, but he changes the diodes anyway. Now, naturally, when he fires the game back up again, he still has the same problem. Believe your meter. If the meter tells you your diodes are good, they are good. And if it tells you the diodes are bad, they are bad. So far, our average mechanic has replaced the regulator and the bridge rectifier, and he still hasn't found the problem or repaired the game. Boy, now our average mechanic is really starting to get upset. He knows he has a voltage problem somewhere, but as far as he's concerned, the only device left that has anything to do with voltage is the transformer. So he goes to his boss and says, gee boss, we have to order a new power transformer. Well, quite frankly, power transformers don't fail too often, and it might be a while before you actually get one in stock. So they bring the game back into the shop and they wait a couple of weeks and the mechanic sets aside a half a day to install the transformer. He installs a transformer, fires up the game, and same problem. Well, naturally, again, he's changed a part that's good. Transformers don't fail very often, 
In fact, next to the cabinet of the game itself, the transformer is probably one of the most reliable parts in the game. So now the regulator, the bridge rectifier, and the transformer have all been changed, and the game still isn't working properly. By process of elimination, our average mechanic finally decides that his problem must be a bad filter capacitor. It's the only part left. So he changes the filter capacitor. And lo and behold, the game starts to work properly. He says to his boss, T-Boss, it turned out to be a really tough problem. It was a bad filter capacitor. Well, diagnosing bad filter capacitors is actually quite simple. Believe me, I know. That average mechanic was me. You only have to go through a fiasco like that once before you find a better way to diagnose a bad filter capacitor. When the bad filter capacitor causes excessive ripple in the power supply, one of the symptoms is a lower than normal reading at the output when you check the DC voltage. Well, standing alone, the DC measurement can point to either of two possible failures. Either the DC output of the regulator has indeed dropped due to a regulator failure, which would be the obvious first guess, or the low DC reading is being caused by excessive ripple in the power supply as a result of the defective filter capacitor. When you make the DC measurement, you have no way of knowing which of the two possible causes are creating the low reading that you see. But by switching your meter over to read AC volts, the meter will automatically ignore the DC voltage and show you the ripple in the power supply as AC. Normally, you should see no alternating current in a properly working DC power supply. Well, here, when we've switched the meter to read AC, we see 6 tenths of a volt of AC ripple. Obviously, we have a ripple problem in this power supply, and ripple is almost inevitably caused by a bad filter capacitor. The importance of this test cannot be overemphasized. Whenever a power supply voltage reads lower than expected, be certain that you switch your meter to read AC volts to find out if this low reading is caused by low voltage or ripple. If you see very little AC, then your power supply is clean and your problem is simply low voltage. However, if you switch your meter over to AC and you read an excessive amount of AC voltage, your problem is more than likely a bad filter capacitor. Of course, the big question is, how much AC is considered excessive? Well, we see power supplies in a number of different voltages, and the ripple has to be expressed as some kind of a percentage compared to the DC voltage of the power supply. Generally speaking, in a regulated supply, the ripple content will be less than one-tenth of one percent when the supply is operating normally. In an unregulated power supply, or on the unregulated input of a regulated supply, the ripple can actually be as high as five percent and the unit will still function properly. However, if you start to get up around five percent ripple, chances are pretty good your capacitor is starting to fail, so keep an eye on it. I try to use about 3% as the figure, and if it goes over 3%, I usually change the filter capacitor.